This is Conversations with Rob. Uh, this is a big interview for me as a sports fan. And before we even get into it, please like and subscribe uh, to this channel. Also, share these videos. Uh, I want to get the world out, the word out rather for all these special people that I interview uh, because most of them are real special people. Today, I got Taylor McQuellen. Uh, it's, some people may say that on sports fans, who's that? Who do you got today, Rob? Well, I have a special person today. Taylor was a phenomenal pitcher at the University of Arizona. She's a wildcat through and through. Was a two-time um, All-American. And uh, she was 80 and 32, I believe, throughout her career with a 1.95 ERA. And also plays on the Mexican national team. Was named player of the year coming out of high school from Gatorade. And as I told Taylor many times, we could talk for about two hours about her accomplishments, but we're not going to keep you guys on here for two hours <laughs> talking about that. Uh, so, Taylor, first of all, thanks so much. And I know you're in Ar uh, Arkansas, rather. Uh, what's the weather like over there today? Uh, yeah, the weather's pretty nice out here so far, um, you know, but I'm uh, happy to be a part of your show. And uh, thanks for having me. So. <laughs> All right, so let's get into the thick of things. Let's start from the beginning when you were first growing up. Uh, playing softball, was that something that your parents uh, kind of pushed you into? Or how did you find the significant your love of softball? Yeah, so um, when I was younger, I was, well, when I was born, I was born with uh, something called Dwayne syndrome in my left eye. Um, so it basically means that I'm visually impaired, can't see out of um, my left eye, only shadows. Uh, so... Um, my parents just kind of started throwing me into a whole bunch of different uh, out of school activities and extracurriculars. So we did a bunch of sports. We tried uh, swimming, soccer, softball, taekwondo, dance, and as many things as we could. And then even some hand eye coordination stuff um, that didn't have to do with sports like piano and um, a bunch of other things. But I started playing softball at the age of seven. That's when we all kind of started. Uh, that that route and ever since I've just been uh, diehard softball and that's been my life since uh, that's been my full um, life about since age 11, 10 or 11. So Taylor let's talk about the Duane syndrome you kind of touched on that a little bit in the last question uh, with the Duane syndrome and how it's you know affected with you with the eye and stuff how did you overcome all those obstacles to go and play Pac-12 softball at a great school? I mean, Arizona is great. Washington's always got a good team. You got USC. Oh, well, you're a big Trojan fan. <laughs> I found out when I researched you as a USC girl. But talk about you're playing in this real intense league in the Pac-12. How did you overcome all those obstacles before college and throughout that college experience? Um, yeah, I think I think that the um, overcoming them was just because I had an amazing support system around me. Um, you know, uh, growing up, I never really faced uh, struggles with kids asking a bunch of questions. They didn't really know a whole lot about it. Um, nobody really knew a whole lot about um, my vision, vision situation since uh, uh, until I was about 17 or 18 years old, my senior year of high school. Um, but just learning how to play the game, it was just a little bit different. Just, I had to work a little bit harder at everything I did, um, work out some kinks in the system, especially when I had first started. Um, but mostly it's just, I just had a really strong support system around me and, um, people that really believed that I can do anything that I wanted to, um, as long as I put in the extra work to do that. Well, that's great to hear. Um, I do want to ask you about. Uh, going from high school to uh, Arizona. Now, uh, when you did make that jump, you also made it with a friend of yours, Alyssa Cardozo, you know, through us talking, you said was your best friend. Did that make it an easier adjustment from college to, uh, in softball life? Uh, yeah, slightly. I, I mean, I actually tremendously, you know, just to have somebody who's um, a comfort zone there with you. Um, you know, at Arizona, we always talked about uh, get comfortable being uncomfortable, but jumping from high school to college, it's a lot different. Um, that's one of the biggest decisions of your life, choosing where you want to go to college and learning how to become independent. And so um, for me, I just had that extra comfort around me. But uh, like you had said, Alyssa has been my best friend since I was 12. Um, and we've gotten to do every aspect of my uh, softball career together, except for the pros, because she's still in college. But um, it's been pretty nice to always have that that comfort and support, um, no matter where I've been or no matter what state I'm in or um, what team we're playing for. So it's, it's been awesome. Right. So 
you know, you won the Gatorade Player of the Year, as we discussed earlier on in the interview. Uh, you know, I'm sure a ton of these big schools were looking at you. I read that you committed to uh, Oklahoma State, rather. Then you decommitted, went to Arizona. First of all, what was the take on? What was your take on that? Why did you do that? And also, what were all these schools looking at you? What, for instance, what other schools besides Arizona and Oklahoma State were looking at you? Uh, okay, yeah. So I committed to Oklahoma State my freshman year of high school, and um, you know what I loved about it was that it was it kind of felt like a home away from home. It was a lot different than California. Stillwater is a very small town. Um, there's only they live and bleed, you know, orange and black. And, um, you know, it's a very college town. And so that was something so different and something that I really saw myself um, very, I guess, intrigued. And um, so when I went on my visit there, I kind of was like, okay, like this seems, this seems awesome. Um, my sophomore year of high school, my um, dad ended up getting really sick again. He's been uh, battling congestive heart failure uh, since I was little. So um, his um, illness got pretty bad. And so he ended up in the hospital and um, a whole bunch of tests and um, doctors and all that kind of stuff. And it just kind of gave me a reality check. And um, we weren't really sure what the time frame was. We weren't sure what was going to happen. And um, at that point, I put family first. And so that's when I decommitted from Oklahoma State and just, um, you know, kind of let God choose his path for me. And if that was uh, me not being able to go to um, a top university to play college or um, staying closer to home, that's what it was. Um, and then the summer of my sophomore, uh, summer going into my junior year, uh, after uh, PGF ended for travel ball, the national championships, I took um, some visits to uh, the PAC, a few of the Pac-12 schools, um, started with Arizona and then went to uh, Oregon State, the University of Oregon, the University of Washington, and then Arizona State. Um, and then I ended up going back to Arizona one last time um, while I was uh, after I visited Arizona State. And um, I kind of just knew that that was that was my home. That's where I wanted to be. And so uh, a week before school started my junior year, I committed to the University of Arizona to um, play with Alyssa. And, um, you know, I've, I've been there ever since, stayed committed there, uh, went there all four years. And um, you know, that's probably to the state, one of the best decisions I've ever made was to become a Wildcat and be part of, um, the Wildcat family. Right. So let's talk about the four years that you were at Arizona. You did do some big things as we talked about two, uh, all American years for you pitching. Uh, you were striking out about, out everybody in sight with 815 career strikeouts at Arizona. So let's talk about that. There was a lot of highs. There was a few lows. Uh, how do you, uh, you know, thinking back to it, how do you think back about the, your career at Arizona? And then your last game, playing Alabama, another good team, and losing a tough game to them. Uh, what, what brings you memories with, with that career? Yeah, um, you know, I think when I look back on it, uh, entering my freshman year, I feel like just the entire freshman year was probably um, the hardest struggle that I've had to figure out how to work through um, in my softball career, just – um, really moving up to a higher level where competition is steep. Everybody's good, no matter who you're playing. And so for me, it was just learning how to be confident in myself and um, trusting my abilities to play the game. And I think that definitely freshman year was a growing experience. It was a learning curve. And um, it just, in the end, it made me stronger. But I think that I did get stronger every year. And um, that's just because of, you know, the teammates that I had, um, the coaches that we had at Arizona and the success that, um, the team all together was able to um, piece together and really um, perform. But, um, you know, I did think that it, without, you know, the teammates I had, we wouldn't have gotten, I wouldn't have been as successful as I was, especially at the collegiate level. Um, just, just with confidence, with support, um, not a lot, a lot of negative energy. So it, it was really awesome to be in a positive environment and um, continue to grow and play the game that I love. But um I think you also mentioned the the last game. That's always going to be one uh, to remember, you know, your last game as um, a college athlete. It's not something that you're ever going to forget, but um, there are so many memories that I'm going to remember at Arizona. And that's just, you know, one of, one of the few of them, but it's not the one that I, you know, it's not some of the memories that I'm going to remember as the good times. Um, but definitely getting to end my collegiate career at the Women's College World Series was um, one of the best feelings that I would say a collegiate athlete could have. 
So what would you give advice? What would your advice be rather to uh, young girls playing softball coming up? And uh, maybe for that and even girls that are going into college, what would the advice be for them? Um, I think the biggest thing nowadays is that, you know, um, verbal commitments, they're great. And um, committing to colleges are great, but you have to work to be good before you get there. And I think a lot of people, when they when they do decide to commit um, the girls in high school, when they commit and um, they just kind of settle, a lot of them um, have started to settle, stopped working as hard because they feel like they finally made it. And um, the craziest thing about it is that they have no idea what's coming for them. And they're just going to have to continue to work and work and work because, yeah, you made it to college, but now you have to get through it. And um, the best way to get through it is to be able to play, step on that field and play as many games as you possibly can. And the way you're going to do that is to be one of the best performers on the field, be one of the best teammates, um, learn to love the game, even at its worst times, and just and continue to push through it because this game is really something special and um, it's not something that should be taken for granted because there are far worse things than having a tough game or, um, you know, maybe not, not being able to play on the field all the time. So it, it's really a, um, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Right. Uh, so uh, this kind of affects you. Uh, well, it more so affected you before than it does now. Um, as far as in California, as a person from California, we just seen the governor of California uh, mm -hmm. sign a law saying that uh, college athletes in two, by 2023 in California are going to be uh, able to get paid. What is your position as somebody that's uh, played uh, college softball for four years, was a great player, but not only just that, uh, I want to also get your position on this. We hear a lot of people... Uh, that are sports fans, and we know women's uh, women's sports doesn't get as much credit as men's. Whether it's softball, basketball, it's all football and basketball. Those are the ones that draw, and and it's only men's. So, what is your take, first of all, on the bill being signed as being a college athlete? But not even just that. What is your take on this? a lot of these people saying only football players should get the money, only basketball players should get the money, also? And it's mostly just pushing men's sports instead of women's sports also. Right. So, um, um, you know, I think that it's kind of crazy that the um, Fair Pay to Play Act has even come into effect. Um, and, you know, being from California, I mean, I, my family doesn't live there anymore. Um, they just recently moved to Arizona. But um, just being from California, it's it's a lot different. And um, I think that, you know, it, it there are a lot of positive positives and negatives that can come out of it. But um, it's just, it's, you know, I really don't know. I can't really tell you what the NCAA is going to do. I'm sure they're not too happy about it, but I think it's going to be, it's going to start to change regardless of, um, the outcome before 2023, it's going to change the way that, um, people see college athletics and, um, what's going to happen in college athletics. And I think that, um, you know, in relation to women's sports, I think that, um, softball has become such a big stage. It's been put on such a, so much of a bigger platform, um, but it could be even more. Um, and that's, that's for all women's sports, whether it's basketball, volleyball, um, swimming, anything that it is, um, it should definitely be on a bigger platform. I know that, um, you know, women in sports are continuing to grow and they're continuing to be great. And, um, we're working the that much harder to show that women's sports should be up there, you know, with male sports and, um, you know, I think it's great what softball's done. I think they need to keep it moving and keep it growing um, at the college level. You know, every game in the postseason is on TV, and that's what we want. But we want as many games as we can get on TV um, because people watch it. They love to see it. And, um, you know, at Arizona, we our women's basketball team last year won the WNIT, and the amount of fan base that we got um, just for them, you know, continuing success, it was huge. And they were fired up, and I think that their fan base and the support and – um, you know, they're, the growing media on them, it just made them stronger and it made it better and it made it more exciting to watch. And I think that that's what we need in women's sports is a platform for everybody to see what women's sports are, to watch them, to support them, um, to fall in love with them because they're really exciting to watch no matter what women's sport it is. And um, it's not taking any credit away, you know, from men's football or basketball because those are high visibility sports. Everybody wants to watch them too. Um, but sports are a great thing, no matter whether you're male or female. And, um, 
it's entertainment, but it's exciting. You get to watch it, you get to see it, and they really make it feel like you're a part of it. So, um, you know, I, I think the only way it's going to grow is to keep building platforms for every um, sporting event possible, high visibility, um, not as much visibility, no matter what division you are, no matter uh, whether it's, you know, travel ball, college, professionals. Um, we just got to get sports on TV more and more and more. Well, well, the thing is, you know, with softball, I mean, we've seen the U.S. women's soccer team when they won. Uh, they are trying to get that fair pay, pay. So that was good for women's sports. I do, uh, we don't have to go too much into this, but I do see a lot of sexism uh, with this stuff. And, uh, you know, women that are great athletes just don't get the, um, you know, the time and the love that uh, men's that men that are good athletes get. They don't get the jersey sold in the campus bookstore. They don't get... Uh, you know, uh, the love on the TV or the internet or anything. So it's sad, but hopefully, like you said, and I do agree that a little by little it is uh, turning around. Um, but let's talk about the Olympics. You're going to be on the Mexican women's uh, uh, national team for softball. And finally, softballs came back to the Olympics. First of all, what, why, uh, I know softball went away for a while, but what is your take about softball finally coming back to the Olympics? Oh my God. I'm so excited. Um, I think that, you know, being able to play with the Mexican national team, it's, it's been surreal. It's been, um, you know, a dream come true. I remember when I was a little girl being, um, seeing softball in the Olympics and watching it, that's like the biggest stage that you can get in sports and sporting events. And, um, I just remember sitting there and, you know, I wanted to be an Olympian and, um, you know, yeah, it's, it's not, maybe it's not for USA. Um, and maybe that just wasn't my outcome for me, but um, I'm proud to be Mexican. I'm proud of who I am. I'm proud of um, all of the people around me. I'm proud of the girls on my team. Um, they become my sisters and I'm proud to represent my family um, and their heritage and everything that, um, you know, my family is. And I think that it's so amazing to be able to um, use this platform and have softball back in the Olympics and to um, continue to see it grow. And this is going to be one of the biggest stages, it, the biggest stage I'm ever going to play on. And I'm just so excited. It's, I still don't think it's hit me yet. It's very surreal. Um, but I'm just, I'm proud of Mexico. I'm proud of the team. I'm proud of all the work that they've put in. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. And and, you know, you never know with it going in and out when when the next uh, softball Olympics are going to be after 2020. But, um, you know, with hope and continuing to grow the game, it's hopefully it'll be back relatively soon. So, Taylor, let's talk about this now. Uh, you guys did qualify for Mexico. You won the North American. You can correct me if I'm wrong. on this. <laughs> the, North, the North American uh, qualifier, uh, which was really huge. Uh, how do you think Mexico will do in the Olympics? Uh, and how do you think they fear up, or you guys fear up against USA, which is also a power in the, it's going to be a power in the Olympics? Um, yeah, so, you know, we uh, qualified in Canada. That's where the um, North American qualifier was. And uh, we had some stiff competition. It wasn't easy. Um, we had our, our work cut out for us. And um, any team can come and play. It doesn't matter, you know, who's on the field, what what country's on your jersey. Um, you got to go out there and you got to perform and give it everything you've got. And you got to be the best person and the best team on the field um, in order to keep winning games and um, getting the Olympic berth. But, um, you know, the six teams that are in the Olympics between uh, Mexico, USA, Italy, Japan, um, Australia, you know, um, I think it's just going to it's it's going to we're all going to continue to grow. And, you know, Canada's in there, too. And those are the that's the team one of the teams that we played in the qualifiers. So, um, but the NPF has allowed us to play on um, these international teams uh, this past summer. So it's made every team a little bit stronger and, um, you know, they're going to keep working for it. But, you know, when we get there, no, no game's going to be easy. It's the Olympics. Everybody wants to medal. Everybody wants to win. Um, the competition's going to be hard, but it's, it's going to be worth it. And those are the games you want to play. You want to play the close games, the ones, you know, where you got the, the good butterflies in your stomach. And I think that no matter what team steps on the field to match up against another team, all games are going to be up for grabs. Right. So let's talk more about the, uh, the Olympics. Now, obviously the Olympics is next year in Japan. Uh, you know, there's a lot of time now, but you're doing so many things at once where you told me, uh, you're doing going to grad school right now. You're helping out the softball team at 
uh, University of Arkansas uh, lessons, all that stuff. How do you get ready for a big uh, event like the Olympics uh, with all that stuff on your plate at one time? Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's kind of crazy and life does seem very crazy. Um, but right now I'm kind of settled. Um, I think just traveling all summer, being part of the MPF, not really having a um, set destination. Uh, constant travel, constant travel with Mexico once the NPF season ended. It's just been such a busy summer that now that I'm kind of in Arkansas, it's still busy, but it's a little bit more settled. So um, I am a grad assistant at the University of Arkansas. Um, I'm getting my uh, master's in sports management um, thanks to the coaches that uh, decided to take a chance in me and, um, you know, let me be a part of their program here at Arkansas. But, um, you know, on top of that, we do have to prepare for the Olympics and we do have to um, be able to work and compete and to get all of our practice in. Um, and we do have like a schedule. Mexico does have a schedule of events that uh, we'll be uh, going around, traveling around during the spring, participating in events, um, going places like Australia, Europe, Japan, um, and then a, a few places in the U.S. I think we'll go to um, we're trying to go up to uh, Fresno and uh, San Diego and um, you know a couple other places uh, back down in Puerto Vallarta in Mexico play in the Marinette um, which is a big collegiate tournament so we're just trying to get everything we can to get games in get competition and be able to play together um, but you know while we're not playing and we're not as a team um, I'm fortunate enough to be be here at Arkansas. I get to practice with the team, get to pitch live to them, throw bullpens to their catchers. So it's, it's really awesome. I feel like being in this environment is going to be the perfect environment for me to be able to see live, be able to um, pitch whenever, be able to take reps with them on the field if I need it. So it's just giving me um, an atmosphere where I can really feel like I'm investing a lot of my time into preparing for to be the best that I can be for Mexico by the time we uh, get to the Olympics. All right, so obviously you've pitched, like as you just said, uh, to a lot of the girls on the Arkansas softball team. Uh, what do you? How do you think? Uh, how do you feel about that team so far? I mean, I know softball season is not for a couple of months. I, you guys start up in January, so there's plenty of time for girls to get better. But uh, you know, you're dealing with Arkansas, and you've played against a lot of these teams in the SEC. I mean, you got Florida, Alabama, Tennessee. Uh, among other teams, there's a lot of power teams in the SEC, just like there is in the Pac-12. So how do you think Arkansas stacks up against these teams? Yeah, you know, I think that um, since since Coach Stifel got here about five or six years ago, she's really turned this program around, and it's only been such a short period of time. But, you know, they went from um, a team in the SEC winning three games a season to having Coach Stifel come in and um, – Getting, getting to host a regional and being in a super regional and making it to the postseason in this past, these past couple of years. And, um, you know, that's a huge step. That's a huge step just for a five-year period. And I think that says a lot about the coaching and what they're able to do with these players. But I think it also um, credits the players for, for being able to um, believe in the new coaching, see a chance change, want to be a part of a special program. And um, Arkansas has really built themselves up in the SEC. And yeah, the, comp the competition is stiff in this um, conference, just as it is in the other, you know, power five conferences. But I think that, um, you know, they're going to give people a run for their money. And I think that um, if they just continue to buy into the process and buy into uh, being a team and buying into, okay, we can go from yeah, we're going to compete in these games to we're going to win these games. Um, and it's still early on and they have a ton of time. We just started fall practice uh, last Wednesday. So um, being on the field together, they're just going to going to mesh a little bit more. But they, they have some stiff hitting, some quality pitching. And, um, you know, they're going to give teams a run for their money this year. And I'm excited that I can be a part of it. And I'm excited to see what they can do on the field and um, – see what kind of offense they can rack up, you know, with um, Daniel Gibson and Braxton Burnside as uh, key hitters in this lineup. And then obviously having um, Autumn Storm as her senior season and uh, Mary Half is going to be coming back from an ACL, but um, her mentality is really good and really strong right now. So um, this team's going to stack up against the good teams and they're going to give them everything they got. All right. So two more questions before we get into for some fun stuff. Dana. All right. <laughs> uh, First of all, you as you said earlier, you're playing in the National uh, Professional Fast Pitch uh, Women's League for uh, softball uh, with the uh, Cleveland Comets. Uh, what is, you know, for people like me that I, I do like softball, but a lot of these games, 
I know the league's been in existence for what five, six, some odd years, something like that. Oh, regardless, um, with the league now, uh, what is the league about? How many teams are in the league? Uh, with, on your team, who do you guys play? Where do you travel to? If you can kind of give the viewers a little bit of a synopsis about what goes on with the league. Yeah, so, um, I mean, obviously last season was my first season in the league um, after I got drafted, but I was fortunate enough to where um, the Cleveland Comets were partnered with um, the Mexican national team. So there was a few teams like that in the league last year. We had the Canadian Wild, um, who's Team Canada, and then um, – the uh, Australian team was in the league as well. And then there was um, China. They were also in the league. They had the Beijing Eagles out there too. So, um, and then obviously they had the big teams like the um, USA Pride and the Bandits. Um, so that, that those were the six teams that were in the league last year. Um, four of them were paired up with international teams. Um, you know, I think that helped tremendously for the international teams being able to play together and um, get a lot of, a lot of, uh, games in in a short period of time to be able to go to um you know different qualifiers and being prepared to participate in these qualifiers to try to get a berth to the olympics and um you know i think that's going to help tremendously you know as for the league this year um i uh the pride's not in it any longer so it'll be a little bit different um but we don't really know much else besides that but um the cleveland comments will be in there another year with the mexican national team so we'll be out there again this summer um, they changed a little bit of the rules up so we can have uh, a little more time to travel around to different areas and stuff. Um, but, you know, I think um, it'll be a little bit different this year. So we haven't really figured out all the kinks yet. Um, haven't gotten too much info. It's still a little early, but uh, we'll be in there and helping out. But I think the biggest thing is just um, growing the league and getting getting the the advertisement and the media and the viewers that, you know, uh, college softball does and um you know like we were talking about earlier women's sports especially at the pro level are are a lot different you know people don't watch them as much but um we're trying to do everything we can to grow the game and the way to grow the game is to get people to buy in and um, get people to watch the game and um get it out there on the media so that's right. the, that's going to be the key for the league all right so my last question before we get to the fun stuff now i was on youtube and i did some research on you uh, I saw there was a video of you do your hair uh, before the game. And they were they had, so one of the girls was doing your hair and showing uh, you how you do your hair. Uh, can you talk about for the viewers, what is that about? Like I, like I said, I used to do a lot of softball games. And I was friendly with a lot of the girls, and we were cool together and stuff. And they would all do like ponytails or different things with their hair as you, you do and stuff like that. What, what is the significance of that and of you doing your hair like that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, for me, I think like one of the biggest things was um, for me, it's a confidence thing. You know, I think that, you know, Coach Kendra always used to say, look good, feel good, play good. And for me, that is 100 percent true. If I'm not looking good out there, I'm not feeling good and um, it's going to affect my ability to perform. So I wanted to make sure that every time I stepped out on the field, um, for me, it's just I, this it's the big stage. Every time you step, step up out there, you're on the stage, you're live, you're on TV. They zoom in on your face all the time. So, you know, for me, I was like, I don't want anybody seeing any stuff that shouldn't be seen on TV. Um, I, look, I look as good as possible. Um, but I th think for me, it was just, it was a tremendous confidence thing. Um, it was also a great way to team bond. I found out there would be a ton of girls in the locker room before games trying to get ready, doing their hair, getting their makeup done. Um, all sorts of stuff, putting in bows in their hair, everything like that. So um, it was great team bonding. Everybody loved to do it. You want to look good to go out there and play good. Um, right. And and it just, it you know, it makes it great to just be able to go out there and play the game that you love. But, um, you know, for me, I would dedicate a ton of time getting ready before games to make sure I was <laughs> looking the best to play the best. So <laughs> I just right. suppose I can get it for you. So let's talk about the quick questions now. What's your nickname on the field? Um, so at Arizona, um, my Twitter handle is uh, at Tay Beasy. So um, Mo Mercado, um, the starting shortstop at Arizona, when I uh, first got there, she um, started calling me Tay B. And so it kind of shortened it, 
shortened my nickname and that's kind of what stuck. So um, everybody at Arizona, even all the fans, they start calling me Tay B. So um, that's now my nickname, uh, you know, everywhere around Tucson and Arizona and any Arizona fans um, and all my friends and teammates. But um, it really stuck with me and I kind of like it a lot. So I think it'll be around for a long time. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, Tay B, where was the toughest place that you played during your college career? Oh, man. Okay. Um, I think if we're staying in conference, um, UCLA definitely is a tough one, but um, ASU is is pretty, pretty awful up there. You know, I think that the Arizona rivalry is always huge. So, you know, they'll always say coming out to Tucson sucks. And we'll always say, you know, going out oh. to Tempe is just as rough. But, um, it's just because, you know, you have diehard fans for ASU and you have diehard fans for Arizona. But um, for me personally, I think the hardest places to play were in the SEC. Um, we went to Auburn for Supers my freshman year, um, and they have a ton of people there. And, uh, you know, the SEC doesn't really like Pac-12, so that's how that was. But um, Tennessee, for sure, they have a crazy little section um, they have a name for them and they're just all rowdy all the time. And they're right in your ear. They sit right on top of your dugout, scream at anything, do anything. Um, that was probably the craziest, uh, little group of a uh, little crowd that I've ever seen just sit there and hound you to death. So, um, but I'd say a lot of places in the SEC, those were the tough ones to be, uh, to be at and, uh, play in. You'll get to see that again as a, as a coach. <laughs> Oh, so, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'm so excited. So, so let me ask you this. Was there any, like, swearing or yelling? Like, they were just yelling? There was no nothing, like, really vulgar? Um, people you know, going after you? you kind of it out. You know, I'm sure there's a, a bunch of stuff that you don't want to hear or don't really uh, appreciate all the time. But, right. um, you know, it's just it's it's fans cheering for, for their team, and yeah. they want their team to win, and they'll do anything to try to rattle the other team. So, But that's how it is anywhere. So True. All right. So favorite athlete? Oh man, this is a good one. Um, all right, so softball athlete, I would have to say Tony Mascarenas. Um, she's Alyssa Palomino Cardoza's aunt. Um, she was uh, my high school coach, also went to the University of Arizona, um, and just has, uh, I think she's my favorite just because of her mentality, her attitude. Um, I wouldn't have sh such a strong mentality for the game if it wasn't for her, um, but just being around her, it kind of inspired me even more to, um, you know, want to be the strongest person, want to be better than everybody else. And um, she was really the, the inspiration for that one, um, softball wise. But um, yeah, that was so, I mean, I, I guess I would say, Tony, that'd be, that'd be the, the top one for me. All right. Now the viewers want to know what you who, what kind of music you like and also your favorite singer. Awesome. Okay. So my favorite singer is Beyonce. <laughs> okay. um, she's, she's great. She's my favorite. Um, favorite music. I wouldn't really, I don't really have a genre. Um, if okay. you know, if, if the beat's good, if the music's good, the words are good, I'm all about it. Um, I'm not, I'm not picky. I'm not a, a discriminator against certain music genres. Um, you know, I get my country in there the pop. I have, um, you know, the Latin pop that you got going on now that we're team Mexico. We spent a ton of time listening, um, this summer and I've actually grown a fall on liking to it. Um, but you know, I'm an, I'm an all around type of music person. So, uh, as long as the song's good, I'm all for it. Fav favorite pump up song. Whew, um, for the game. I think that changes as new songs come out. Um, yeah. for sure. Uh, I wouldn't really say I have one, uh, favorite pump up song. So yeah. uh, it's kind of just, you know, whatever's out there and, uh, you know, whatever I'm kind of like vibing to at the time, I guess. Uh, yeah, no, fair enough. No worries. All right. If there's any special talents besides softball, dancing, maybe, I don't know. Uh, oh, man. Um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty basic. Um, I, I don't really have, you know, I mean, I stuck to softball for a reason. I think I had the most potential out of anything else that I did. Um, you know, I mean, the closest you can get, I can, I can draw pretty well. Painting, absolutely not. Um, drawing is pretty, is pretty good. Uh, you know, coloring, you know, that's anything between the lines. So, coloring is pretty, pretty good. Other than that, you know, I'm just, I'm here for it and all about softball. That's why I've been a part of it so long. Okay. Well, that, that's great because you were great at it. And you still oh, are. Thank you. Uh, still are, obviously. It's just still playing. Uh, any pre-game rituals or superstitions that you have? 
Oh my goodness. Uh, yes, I'm very superstitious. Um, if something works, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's how I am. Um, but you know, doing doing the hair like you talked about, it was always hair and makeup. Got to look good on game day. Um, to be the best uh, of your abilities, whether that was waking up, you know, at 5, 30, 6 a.m. to make sure I was ready to leave at 8 a.m. or be down at breakfast. That's what I was doing. Anything I could do to help the team. Um, I have a pregame pitch routine. Um, I'm sure if you look that up before every pitch, you'll see me doing the same thing. Um, same thing at the start of the inning. Same thing between pitches. Um, it never really changes. It's just kind of it's a routine. I stick to it. Um the different outs and stuff. I know you've seen, I'm sure you've seen a lot of those where people do the out routines, uh, right. infield, outfield, pitcher, whatever it may be. Um, little words uh, in when we do the huddles with the first and third baseman uh, at Arizona, I would always say the same thing, hit the third baseman's hand, same thing, hitting the first baseman's hand, mm -hmm. turn around, wipe the dirt, and I'm ready to go. So um, it was just the little things, but all of the little things really do add up. So, um, right, I agree. But like I said, if if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> so, so. All right, so three more questions. Uh, how will Arizona do this year without you? Oh, my God, they're going to be amazing. It's the University of Arizona. Um, they've built, you know, they've had uh, the tradition and the culture and the family environment and the amazing talent for, you know, as long as we can remember, they're one of the top programs ever. Um, and that's all. I a lot of it's Coach Kendrea and what he's done and how he's built this program and um, the girls that he's recruited to be a part of Arizona's family and tradition. And, um, you know, they're going to have great pitching um, with Alyssa Dunham as their, as their senior pitcher and um, Mariah Lopez transferring from Oklahoma. But um, the key to Arizona besides their pitching is is their hitting and um, how close-knit they are off the field. Um, I think last year was the strongest year, you know, I've had just being a part of um, the best communication, the best on and off the field um, camaraderie on the team. It's been absolutely amazing. And, um, you know, they're really carrying that with them this year. Um, but, you know, Arizona's going to be great no matter what. You know, they're always my number one. Um, maybe a little bit tied with the University of Arkansas now because I'm here. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a wildcat for life and, and I will support them through everything. So they're going to be just fine. I'm so excited to watch uh, their run this year. Well, this is going to be a no comment question for you. If <laughs> University of Arizona plays against Arkansas, who do you cheer for? You can just say no comment. We'll move on. Yeah, I think I'm gonna cry a little bit no matter what the outcome <laughs> is. So, um, you know, I don't unless unless it's in postseason. I don't really. I don't think we'll uh, meet up right. this year. So, um, I think yeah, it'll it'll be a bittersweet one. But um, you know, I'm. It's no matter what, I'm cheering for U of A because they're both U of A. So I guess that's your answer. You won't know which one I'm doing for. Hey, that was pretty good. That was a good response. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, last question. Uh, who do you look up to the most? Oh, my gosh. Um, the person I look up to the most is my dad. I think just with everything he's been through um, with his, his heart condition and medical conditions, um, but just the person he is. And um, it just – he just showed me that no matter – um, how, how strong you are that day, physically, mentally, whatever it is, you just wake up with a purpose every day. You wake up, do, the, do everything you can. Um, he's the most amazing person I've ever met in my life. Oh my gosh, I'm going to get teary eyed. Um, but he's definitely my biggest inspiration. There's not a day that goes by where he's, I've never heard anything say a bad thing about a bad thing about my father. Um, everybody loves him. He's great. He's funny to be around. Um, he's the person I, I aspire to be. And, um, the way he takes care of our family, I just, I can't thank him enough. He's hands down the most amazing person that I've known in my life. That's awesome. Uh, so actually I lied. One more question. Because <laughs> we got stuck on that U of A thing. I, I totally blamed on <laughs> and said the wrong last question. This is the real last question. What is something that most people uh, do not know about you? Oh, man. Okay. Um Oh, I don't know. Looking for some secrets. Okay. So, um, I guess the biggest thing, there's this thing called Enneagrams, and they tell you basically what type of person you are. So I'm actually really interested in that kind of stuff. Um, pretty, pretty weird, just a whole bunch of weird kind of stuff. Um, but uh, it, I, I'm a type eight. So I'll let all of your viewers look that up and kind of experience that on their own. But that's just my personality. That's who I am. That's me to a T. Um, so they can get a better 
a representation of who I am, but uh, just looking up kind of interesting stuff. Um, I love watching the same shows over and over and over again on Netflix. Um, the Gossip Girl, The Gilmore Girls, One Tree Hill, Friends is my favorite show. Um, okay. You know, I'm just, it's, I'm a traditional person, but type eight, look it up. That's who I am. And uh, that should give you all the answers you need to what you don't right. know about me. So, <laughs> well, Taylor, like I said, you've been great. And for the viewers that uh, will not, they will not know this, but now they will. We've tried to get this interview done about two or three times. <laughs> two or three times now so we're hoping that this is going to be the last cut but will you promise to uh come on again uh during this uh, softball season maybe to talk about uh the wildcats or the razorbacks and also uh coming up with your softball season uh professionally in the olympics will you promise to come on again oh absolutely just hit me up and we'll uh, make a time that works so uh we can keep everybody up to date on uh the life of the Wildcats, uh, the Razorbacks, and all things Mexico. So <laughs> Right. Yeah, I mean, because like, I do appreciate you coming on. You've been excellent, and you've really told a lot of the viewers about softball. And, you know, a lot of people uh, don't know much about softball, especially probably uh, male viewers. My dad played softball uh, in his uh, league and stuff like that uh, after college and stuff because he was a baseball guy in college, but... Uh, I want to give softball the most love I can, and I want to give you the most love because we really do appreciate you coming on, and uh, and uh, you know we want to support you in any way you, we can. So we appreciate it, Taylor. Thanks. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to uh, grow the game and uh, show people, you know, the insides of all things softball. So <laughs> thank you. All right, all right, Taylor. So we're gonna end it there. Everybody, thanks so much for listening. I appreciate the time. And we'll definitely hear from Taylor in the future. Uh, 